I got some dirty shit to pick up at the dry clean. I got a tidy bitch to pick up, I got less Selena. Shady hop up in the whip, but I ain't never seen it. Shady love the way I whip it in a two seater. It is I, Chet Lemon, standing in for KB Chronic, uh, who is MIA at the moment. He was just in the chat, and now we don't know where he is. Um, but yeah, I will be the voice of INCW Holy Wars today. Uh, hopefully everyone enjoys the show. I know KB put a lot of work into this um, to his vocal stylings uh, here in this wonderful promotion. Um, so with, with, with my brief introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, we have our opening contest. Uh, we have Fatback and Milk Dud, also known as Malibu's Most Wanted, a, uh, a new team here in INCW, going head-to-head -head with one of PWA's finest tag teams, if I do say so myself, um, the Samoan Storm, Talofa and Tama Storm, uh, two very large individuals, uh, very large Samoans, as you can see. Um, it's it's going to be great. It's going to be a good show. And we're going to go ahead and get it underway because people are are itching. Itching for a new... Oh my god, what is that? Hmm. That's a that's a new intro and hopefully no one gets sick. <laughs> uh, it's Chet Lemon, not Chuck Lemon. Chuck Lemon is a baseball player. I am not... Some, some questionable lighting that will probably get us shut down before the show is over, but that's fine. Everything's fine here. <laughs> no, I am not the ever effervescent Ch Cheddarfield. We've got the Holy War chants already going. You'll forgive my uh, my apprehensiveness to call these matches. Um, still kind of new to this. From what I've seen, I w went back and watched uh, some of the tapes on the YouTube channel that they have here, the, uh, the iNew Project on YouTube, and they actually had uh, a, quite an extensive library for INCW. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, if you're new to everything, I, I would definitely recommend that you go do that. Unfortunately, these two teams didn't have too much in the library, so hopefully we will be able to uh, get a better feel for them. Alright, and here we have them. Malibu's Most Wanted. Fatback and Milk Dud. Uh... Fatback is the individual in the bib and coveralls, and Milk Bud is the one that is not. And their opponents... Weighing in at staggeringly large individuals. Oh, they even miscolored or alternated their knee pads to make things a little bit easier for us as well. Talofa is the individual with the blonde hair and Tama is the individual with the black hair. Uh, yes, this is actually a smoking establishment. Um... It, it, it builds and feeds into the ambiance. Holy Wars is known to be a war ground, uh, a battlefield, if you will, to end all of the feuds from that season of INCW. Something else I learned from our YouTube channel, the INU Project at YouTube.com. And here we go. We have a new referee as well. Oh! The the sheer power of Talofa. And Fatback answers back with some power of his own as he throws all of his weight into the large Samoan. 
back and forth action out of the gate. They are answering one another move for move. Oh, chop of the, or block of the Mongolian chop. Followed it up with a nice clothesline there and a back body drop from Talofa. Talofa doing everything he can to get momentum back. Fat back, no selling that chop and answering with a vertical suplex. Almost of the snap variety, but both men are a little bit too large to be moving over that quickly. Talofa gets thrown into the corner. Tag made to Milk Dud. Talofa is up. Look at the strength. And he's dropped. Follows it up with a scoop slam to his own partner on Talofa. Milk Dud. No good, uh, calling himself apparently the ring general, uh, according to his uh, tights, sitting on the chest of Talofa Storm, and Talofa with a rake to the eyes. Talofa with a fist in the back of the head, followed up with a stomp to the lower back. Tags in Tama, Tama Storm. Going right after Milk Dud. Went for a headbutt, and Milk Dud knows exactly what that means coming from a Samoan, but he caught the knee instead. Unfortunate. Milk Dud in dangerous territory over here, and Tama with a clothesline to the back of the head. Milk Dud trying to get the tag into Fatback. Fatback doesn't even have his hand on the tag rope, so would have been to no avail. And the Dragon Sleeper with the Grapevine around the body locked in tight. Milk Dud is in a world of hurt right now. Manages to roll through. I didn't know he was uh, athletic enough to get through there. And Talofa, or Tama rather, sent into the corner. Fatback tagged in. Fatback and Milk Dud working together. Big chop. Great tag team action right there. And Tama is done being in that corner. Sends Fat back over to the Samoan Storm side of things. Slingshot off the rope. Drop toe hold into an elbow right in the lower back of Fat Back. Fat Back with a high knee. Puts Talofa on the mat. And sends him over the top rope. Tries to follow him with a clothesline just in case, but was not necessary. Elbow strike. Oh, and another elbow strike. Firing right back. Looking for that that spinning kick, rather, uh, of some type. I don't know. Wasn't 100% sure. Couldn't see that well. Punch to the midsection. Fat back. Once again with the chops. Focusing on the legs. And blocks the Mongolian chop yet again. Referee is at a count of six. Talofa is now his the back of his neck is is not in good condition. Oh, Tama, Tama reaching over with a punch. Referee at a count of eight. Talofa needs to get back in the ring. He is in no hurry and rolls in nonchalantly. Was not worried at all. Oh, nice sit out spine buster by Talofa. Caught Fatback off guard and then a knife edge chop right across the bridge of the nose. That will definitely take away any vision that Fatback ever dreams of having in the rest of this match. Sling blade beautifully landed. Talofa now has him up, swings, and the Emerald Fusion. Emerald Fusion by Talofa. And a back body drop. Fatback getting back into this match. Oh. Talofa with the leg sweep. As Fatback in the corner. What are we looking for here? Talofa with the scoop slam. And Tama off the top with a big splash. Goes for the pin here. Milk Dud it was left unchecked and was able to get in and stop it. What was that? A show of athleticism by Talofa, but did nothing. And the ripcord knee. Ripcord knee drops Milk Dud on his head. Tama going for the pin again. Two. No.
Ama this time, sending Fatback into the corner. Fatback wisely moves out of the way. For those of you who do not know, uh, the main event of this evening is actually going to be the retirement match of the Warriors. Uh, Crusher and Drax Shadow were both inducted into the INCW Hall of Legends recently, uh, earlier in the week. And it will be their final match, and it will be against one another. So whichever one of these teams wins here may actually be able to uh, start moving up the ladder. What is that? What is this? It's the Fat 1-9 is what it is. Fat 1-9 by Fatback. Fatback with the athleticism of a monster. One, no, just a one count. Talofa was in to break it up. You may not be able to tell by the tone of my voice, but I am shocked. I am 100% shocked at what what just happened here. Fatback pulling off a 619 is just... It defies all of the laws of physics. It's a physics lesson in and of itself. Fatback with the elbow to the gut. Talofa still down on the outside. Fatback looking for some assistance from Milk Dud. Tama firing back. Has Fatback down. Tama looking for that big punch. A fist drop right off the middle rope. Beautifully landed. Sweep of the leg does Fatback. Fatback tagging in Milk Dud. Milk Dud, the uh, fresher man of the two, has seen a little bit less in here. But the school here, letting the Samoan Storm know INCW is their house. And again, he is, Milk Dud is just going at it. Milk Dud has Tama up. And a big power bomb by Milk Dud. Milk Dud ducks and the beautiful, beautiful reversal by Milk Dud. Milk Dud setting up for something. Thomas sensed it coming. Eyes in the back of his head almost. And now taking Milk Dud over to enemy territory. Snap here, take over in the middle of the ring. Try to keep uh, Milk Dud from breaking free, getting any type of advantage right there. Talofa, ooh, with a punt right to the knee of one Milk Dud. No, beautiful power slam. Dusts his hands off, says it's no big deal. Tama is in and could not break up the, the uh, attempt by Fatback. Talofa measuring, oh my goodness. The chops, the punches, and the knee. Just running through Tama once again, looking to cut off and doesn't do it. And you would think they would stop doing front flips. Uh, I don't believe that that's conducive to stopping a match or to uh, stopping your opponent from breaking up a pin. Um, I could be wrong. The athleticism of all of these well over 300 pound men. I would say the smallest in the ring would be Milk Dud at a staggering 342. One, two, feet all on the ropes, and Milk Dud has enough to power out. That's right, Milk Dud, the smallest man in the ring. Talofa Storm going to work on Milk Dud. him up. Dropped him back around for the Emerald Fusion one more time. Goes for the pin. Two. No. Tama once again flipping his way to nowhere. And here we go again. The chops and the punches from Talofa Storm. And a knee. 
Goes for the pin here. Tama is down on the outside. Two. No. Tama tried to get in to no avail. Big Samoan drop by Talofa. Leg drop by Talofa. Working over Milk Dud. If he can get Milk Dud over into his corner. Oh, went for the belly to belly. Milk Dud with the reversal. No good now, has Talofa up, and a spike, spiked him down, prevented the tag in, Tama doing his best to stay, and No good, not very smart as to where he decided to uh, get the pin in. No good, sends Talofa over into the corner. Milk Dud with the pop-up and the triple bypass by the Malibu's most wanted ghost for the pin here. Triple bypass connects. One, two, and just a two count. Talofa managed to kick out. Got the, the Steiner recliner locked in. Or as Fatback likes to call it, the lawn chair. The lawn chair is applied. Looking for the submission and could not quite get it. Knee to the lower back here. Antelofa with the reversal. Lofa is lost. Was about to go into enemy territory looking for that tag here. And tags in Thomas Storm. We have blood, ladies and gentlemen. Milk Dud has been busted open. Milk Dud is now bleeding profusely all over the arena. Uh, well, he, he will be soon because Tama was laying in some well-placed elbows right to that wound. Causing a lot of problems. Has him locked in. Oh, my goodness. A version of the Shadow Zone. One, two, no. Fat back in to break it up. Talofa nowhere around to assist his partner. Milk Dud again, finally getting back in the groove of things. Tama has him in the corner, and Milk Dud, once again, the ref is in the way. Nope, out of the way just in time. Already paying dividends to have that new referee. And a sling blade out of the corner by Tama Storm. Tag made into Fatback. Fatback putting all his weight into that attack, and all his weight into every bit of that. With a big clothesline. Just putting Tama down. Goes for the pin here. One, two. Oh my goodness. That was so close. Fatback, what is he setting up for here? Fatback got nothing done. Accomplished nothing. Oh, here we go. One. Two and no. Fatback kicks out at two to Tama's dismay. Tama looking for some type of hold there. Fatback with the reversal since Tama in the friendly territory. And here we go again. They're setting up for it a second time. The triple bypass. Triple bypass connects. Milk the goes for the pin here. One. Two and three. Winner by triple bypass. Malibu's most wanted. What a great opening match that was here for Holy Wars 3. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Uh, and hopefully you'll stay through the duration of the show. Uh, I see where it has been brought up in the chat that... Uh, uh, yes, KB is not going to be calling the matches here today. Um, we... We're having trouble locating him. He said he had some issues that he had to deal with, and uh, he vacated the premises. So myself, Chet Lemon, not Chuck, not Larry, Chet Lemon, uh, will be calling all of the matches here today. Alrighty. 
And now we are on to our next match here. If I do believe... Yes. Uh, it is a hardcore title match. If you'll notice, Navy SEAL is not involved in this match. And some of you may, may question uh, why that is. Um, well, the, the problem with that is... Navy SEAL was viciously attacked yesterday uh, outside of a women and children's home where he regularly volunteers. Uh, he was actually uh, left in a dumpster uh, in critical condition. From what I've heard, he is now stable. Uh, he has woken up. He has... Uh, he, he's, he's not on any type of, of life support or anything like that. He, he's good to go. Uh, he'll be all right. He just needs a couple of days to rest up. No severe injuries. Um, but we 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 did find out through eyewitness uh, accounting as well as an admission of guilt from Betty Blackwell that these four individuals were the ones who jumped him. Um, they stole the hardcore title. They are currently in possession of it. I don't know if any one of them has it or if all four of them have it. Uh, but Betty Blackwell wanted to have a match here in INCW um, for basically to find out who's going to be her right hand next season. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on what all is going on with this nonsense. Um, but that that's that's just what we've been told. That's what I was told to relay from the uh, the Facebook post. Uh, the whole thing is up there. If you have Facebook, if you have a way of checking it out, if you don't have Facebook, get someone who does have Facebook to screenshot it for you so that way you can uh, read all the specifics yourself. Um, I see someone saying Jimmy jumped him. Yes, I am also interested because I was told that there was going to be the father, the son, the acolyte, and the protege. Um, and then now Jimmy is on the title card. So I don't know... I don't necessarily know what he has to do with it. I know signs point to not good. Um, but, of course, you have... You have Aaron Blackwell, this individual right here. Uh, he, he's, the, he's the father of Tommy Blackwell, so that would make him the, the father in the nonsense. Uh, and then you have... Um, Tommy Blackwell, who is a son. That makes sense. He's the son of... Aaron and Betty Blackwell, so he fits into it just fine. Uh, and then you have uh, the professional Patrick, who I, I model my career off of his commentary skills. I just need to throw that out there right now. Uh, I Everything that you hear from me here today is modeled completely after him. Everything from his calling a, a, a head scissors takeover of Hurricane Rana to um, siding with the Blackwells all the time. Any of that that happens, you have him to blame. Um, but yes, uh, the Acolyte, uh, which makes sense, that is Patrick, uh, the professional. Um, however, I don't know who the protege is. And here we... This, it's once again Tommy. I didn't realize that I was speaking through one entrance. I looked up and saw an individual in a mask and thought it was another one. Let's hear it for the Blackwells, though. Like, let's just hear... For someone who has done... Uh, for a group of individuals who have done so little in Season 4, they have made quite an impact here at Holy Wars 3. They may actually have the best match. Uh, it is a fatal four-way. It is two out of three falls, uh, with the winner coming out as the hardcore champion. Anything goes, um, but as hardcore championship matches usually go, um, it's there won't be any weapons. Uh, we we would love to see them. They're 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 welcome. They're a welcome commodity here in INCW. Um, th there's all sorts of places all around the arena to fight, but just people do not fight outside of the, the ring and it's it's rather infuriating uh, just just from what I've seen I'm not I'm not poking fun at anything that KB has built uh, I'm not saying anything that KB hasn't already said himself at some point in time just in not as blunt a manner 
man, here's the professional Patrick. Um, a professional of the dark arts is what seems to be the outcome here today. Uh, and ever since, uh, I believe it was I Knew Mania 3, where he was shoved into the back of a very obvious trap of an ambulance. Um, some may say that it's unfortunate what happened to him. I say he brought it on himself for competing in 20 matches in a night that only had seven. And, you know, maybe you should stay conscious when you got to be put in an ambulance. And when the driver and paramedic's eyes go black or red or any other color that's not natural, uh, get out. That's just what I would recommend. All right, and here we go. The man of the hour, if I do say my, so myself, Jimmy Teller. Jimmy Teller, he has done quite a lot here in INCW, and he, he's, he's, he has the hardcore title, so that, that solidifies that he is the protege. Um... It's it's a uh, it's a wonderful wonderful thing to see Jimmy Teller with the hardcore title yet again. Um, I am just at a loss for words. Why did he wait so long to let us know that he was one of the collective? That he was look, even his shirt, his jacket. It replaced he replaced the INCW logo with the 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 insignia of the Blackwells. This is just it's a great career move for this young man right here he is going to go on to do great things so long as he becomes the right hand of betty blackwell now going back and reviewing the tape uh just a little bit more um i've noticed a lot of you have a a severe hatred for the blackwells and it's it's completely unwarranted. I just need to let you know that. It is completely unwarranted. There's no need whatsoever to hate the Blackwells so, so much. Uh, however, um, you loved Jimmy Teller. Jimmy Teller was your hero, and, and now he's in cahoots with the villains. And here we go. Jimmy Teller... Beautiful athleticism, but unfortunately he is at an extreme disadvantage because as far as I can tell um, He is nowhere near the d level of demonic possession that any of these other individuals are Squaring off with Tommy Blackwell the protege looking to exile the son The father looking to decimate the acolyte I dare say this is match of the night already. Just the sheer story behind this. Four bloodthirsty competitors vying for the chance to be not only the final hardcore champion here in INCW, but to be the best of the Blackwell lineage, whether of blood or not. Just a beautiful beautiful thing all right Tommy sends Jimmy to the outside Aaron and Patrick still going at it Patrick with some unreal strength that he's <laughs> some unreal strength for his size I will say that uh, that that's how we confirm any level of demon possession in the real world Goes for the pin here, and broken up by Jimmy. Not looking to give anyone that two out, that first of three falls, or first of two falls that anyone needs. Oh, beautiful tilt a whirl around the world, rather. And Tommy with a disrespectful kick to the back of the leg, sending Teller straight to the ground. Got the side headlock to fly, does Tommy Blackwell. Oh, with the super kick right to the face of Patrick. Tommy 
Tommy used to be. That is an impressively strong ref. He did not even stumble after an entire human being hit him. Maybe INCW has finally found their niche as far as refs. You got to get them from Japan. It's hinted by the uh, the outfit that he's wearing. He's missing the red shoes, though. All right. Aaron going for a pin on Jimmy Feller right there. And throws Patrick away. What is Aaron looking for here? I wonder if he still uses the fastball special. No. He's got a submission hold applied trying to tear away at the abdominal, abdominal muscles of Patrick. Jimmy, with a kick to the midsection, has Tommy against the rope. Patrick doing everything in his power to stop him, but just can't pull it off. Jimmy getting a big running start, follows it up. Goes for the pin here, and Jimmy is in to break it up. Jimmy with an airplane spin to the professional. Oh, I apologize. Uh, I've just been informed that we're supposed to call him uh, Patrick the Devil. So, with an airplane spin to the Devil, super kick to the sun, Jimmy Teller is just one hell of a, cont a contender. I, I, I just have to say, clubbing blow to the heart of Jimmy Teller, trying to remove it. Aaron Blackwell not having any of it. And the Destino applied, perfectly landed right there by Jimmy Teller, dead center of the ring. Goes for the pin here, Patrick is still out. The Devil is asleep. Only a two count. That Destino has put many people away. There is an individual in the crowd known by uh, Devil Slayer who is taking offense to Patrick being the devil. Patrick firing back and now Aaron. Tommy with a side headlock applied, looking to slow the pace of this match down. And Aaron delivering a massive drop kick, bigger than any other person has done in this match thus far. Spinning back kick. Tommy with the step up heel kick to his father, and again to his father. Steps through with the swinging neck breaker. Tommy going for a pin here on Jimmy Teller. One, two, and oh, looking for that three, and the devil is in to break it up. The devil with a Samoan spike, or a ginger spike, whatever you call it here. Spit some blood, I don't know what that was about. Now Patrick sending Jimmy Teller into the corner. The acolyte has to be upset with the protege. Oh my goodness. The drop kick didn't even phase Patrick. Once again spewing blood. I, I don't... Where is that all coming from? We still haven't had a single fall yet. Patrick with a submission lock applied. Looking to make Jimmy tap, and Tommy breaks it up because Tommy wants this match to keep going. As it in the corner, Patrick face first. Oh no. The capture super kick. Wonderful super kick by Tommy Blackwell. Shades of greatness. Everyone else is dazed and confused. Two. Aaron Blackwell came to as soon as he heard the count, and now he is going to catch multiple kicks right to his chest. Jimmy Teller was looking to steal the win there. He is vile in more ways than one, folks. And Patrick busting open Tommy Blackwell. Jimmy Teller going immediately after Patrick. 
And now Jimmy might be looking for a, a kick to the lower back. Could have applied that from any position, but had to rotate him twice. One, two, and no, just a two count. I believe now would be a good time to take a poll of the audience. Uh, who would you like to see win the INCW Hardcore title for the very last time? Oh, look at this. Look at this innovative submission maneuver applied. Jimmy Teller and, and didn't hold it. Could have held it. Could have probably got the submission here, but he decided to let go. Working Aaron Blackwell over with kicks. In the words of the New Day, nobody. Jimmy Teller has Patrick in the corner. Patrick with a back elbow. Jimmy sent into the corner now. Patrick looking for that patented hangman dragon sleeper. Got that dragon sleeper applied and he's down. Sit out powerbomb by Aaron Blackwell looking for that first. Not even looking for it. Look, praying to his wife. Or whatever entity it is they pray to. Tommy back in. Oh, got the look for the pinfall, but couldn't quite get it. Tommy catching his dad's vicious right hand. Punishing him for it and sending him outside the ring. Got the claw locked in right in the abs. Looking to tear away at Jimmy Teller. We got the pin here. One, two, three. Tommy Blackwell picks up the first victory. Jimmy Teller is in. He's in no man's land at this point. Again, Tommy locks it back in. Tommy is looking to finish this match off with the quickness. Has it applied? One, two, three. Tommy Blackwell is your hardcore champion. And the right hand of Betty Blackwell going into season five. Wonderful match, if I do say so myself. Great work by that hardworking family, the first family of INCW. As a matter, I believe they're the only family of INCW. Tommy Blackwell with the decisive back-to-back -back claw finisher right in the abs. One's got to wonder, is he going to change his appearance again? Tommy with some demonic level powers over the lighting of the arena. All right, that is a that is a way to end that, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I want to take this time to thank everyone. Oh my goodness, 14. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to Holy Wars. Uh next up we have our NWC, that's the National Wrestling Council. Uh, world heavyweight title match uh, last Thursday there was a match between Johnny X and Warmaster the individual you see here to your right uh, to decide who or to determine the uh, the NWC world heavyweight champion uh, with a little help from an individual called the Jersey Devil Warmaster was able to muscle his way through and steal the two out of three pinfalls to take home the NWC title, uh, NWC world title. Uh, so he comes in here, and then, of course, every year KB has somebody come in uh, with the NWC title if they're not already part of us, and they, they face off for the world title. This year, we chose Insanity. Um, insanity, just a, as a whole, the, the council... I said we. Hm, that was messed up. Anyways, uh, KB... And the rest of the council had decided that uh, Insanity, with all of his accolades from last season, deserve, was the most deserving out of everyone this season. Uh, the World Tournament actually kind of slowed everything down a little bit, so we couldn't 
um, we couldn't find the necessarily the right one, but we chose the best one. And it just so happens the best one is an individual who hates KB just as much as the rest of us. Um, insanity. Insanity not too happy about being sent away uh, because of his actions in the world tournament. Uh, but all is forgiven. The last time we saw Insanity, he was he was on the receiving end of a heathen bomb, a couple of them actually, in a cage, and actually lost his title, or not his title, actually lost the KB. Um, but we're we're past that now. Uh, it's all water under the bridge, at least from what I understand, because uh, they haven't attacked each other again yet. So we'll see. Uh, but Insanity actually has an opportunity to come through here and become the NWC World Heavyweight Champion. Insanity with his very long um, Triple H S entrance had to stay hydrated, of course. And luckily, that face paint is an oil-based paint, so it kind of just fades away. It's not not really going to build up on it too too much here. We wait in it with bated breath to uh, see what happens here. Obsolete mule of a commentator, sir. I would appreciate it if a champion such as yourself did not uh, stoop to such levels. And here comes Warmaster. Warmaster looking to burn himself out before he even gets in the ring. This this man is the hype. My goodness. Warmaster, a long awaited championship reign. Warmaster is the hype. Warmaster lives the hype. He is the descendant of all of the warrior gods across all of space and time. And here we go. Two out of three falls match. Warmaster out of the gate with a bear hug into a slam. And going directly after the knee, looking to take away that Asylum kick early. Stomp to the lower back. Has a camel clutch applied to Insanity. My goodness, that is a deep hold. And Insanity with his fuck INCW television shirt. Got the neck breaker. Warmaster firing up in the corner. Insanity trying to get back to his feet here. And a big right hand. Warmaster with the belly to belly release suplex from outside to inside. Just the sheer power of this man right here. Insanity with the roll through into an impaler DDT. Has Warmaster about where he wants him. Big uppercut. Insanity. Oh, sweeps the leg. Doesn't send it. What is this? 
What is this here? That's Johnny X, ladies and gentlemen, the former NWC champion. Taunting Insanity. Oh, the X Factor kick to Insanity. What is this? What is going on here? Warmaster once again trying. I don't understand. Okay. Johnny X is the former uh, NWC world champion. The Warmaster beat him. I don't understand why he went after Insanity over Warmaster. Warmaster posing up in the ring. We're going to try to move past what just happened here. Got that that claw applied right to the neck and shoulder muscles. Goes for the pin here. One. No, just a one count. Just a one count, not enough to do away. Got the headlock applied. Insanity. Maybe look at the... We're well, definitely looking to get back on track here with the drop kick to the outside. Referee is at a count of two. They're both going to go back inside. Well, Warmaster's taking the Warmaster takes Insanity back outside. Not had enough with him. Once again, Warmaster taking full, just full control of this match here. A Sumerian nerve punch. Mm. Pinch, punch, not punch, pinch. Warmaster again. Powerbomb follows it up with yet another powerbomb and a third. I believe that's called Hammer of Something 2. Almost. I know it's not a Burning Hammer because Burning Hammer is an actual move. Oh, if he's setting up what I think he's setting up here. Kick to the midsection. Warmaster has the Blood Eagle applied and Insanity sensed it coming. Got the arm drag to get out of dodge. Sweeps the leg, steps through Insanity. With a sharpshooter applied. Sharpshooter applied to Warmaster. Will Insanity get the win here? Warmaster rolls through. Kick to the face. Warmaster again. Throwing bombs. Both these men. Ooh, and a DDT. The DDT connects. The Asylum kick. Is being tuned. Here we go. Asylum kick by Insanity. Follows the pin. One, two. Oh. War Master narrowly kicked out. Insanity knows that it was very, a very small chance. He's lining up for another one. The INCW Holy Wars pay per view event is live. And a second Asylum kick. Insanity with a pin. One, two, three. Insanity gets the first pinfall. Insanity gets the first pinfall and is now working over Warmaster. Warmaster back inside the ring. Insanity trying to catch his breath. He exerted a lot of energy in that. And a fall away slam by the Warmaster here. He is getting pumped up, getting the spirits to give him energy. Goes for a clothesline. Has him up. Back body drop. Coming off all the ropes. And a body splash. Insanity back to his feet with the quickness. This time, Warmaster was ready. Insanity was ready. The reversals are live. Got the sharpshooter applied. Warmaster is all in the ropes here. 
Goes for an elbow drop to the lower back. And goes work on the arm. Both men trying to take out the most pivotal body part of the other. Two, three. Insanity. Insanity in a shocking turn of events is the new NWC world champion. I was not prepared to stop calling that match, but uh, it, it appears I have to. A big round of applause for Insanity. Out of nowhere. It, it goes to show... I, yeah, I'm just going to leave that one alone. I, I, I feel that it is not the time to throw salt in the wound. Insanity admonishing the crowd, letting them all know that this was meant to be him all along. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. We are now moving on to our women's match. We have Susan Rays versus Queen Jolene for the INCW women's match. Or for the INCW women's title, I should say. A very anticlimactic end. That is, uh, that goes without saying. Queen Jolene looking to defend her INCW Women's Championship against the former INCW Women's Champion, Susan Rays. Susan Rays dominated the women's division for the better part of a, of a season, or, or, or a season and a half almost. Uh, neck, uh, the, only, the only women's champion that I would recall being as dominant would be Betty Blackwell. Uh, however, Queen Jolene is very rapidly achieving the same level of dominance that both of those women had. All right. So I am not allowed to call booty shots. Okay. I will call them by their true name, a hip attack. All right, Susan Rays looking to put the title belt back around her waist. She'll be utilizing a moonsault, a twist of fate, and I believe, uh, I believe maybe a DDT, but for sure a twist of fate and a moonsault will be happening here uh, at some point in time. It's two out of three falls. It's bound to happen, and they, uh, they're... Dare I say, they're her bread and butter. Alright, and here comes Queen Jolene making her way to the ring. That, that has her INCW Women's Championship in tow. Looking to retain and finish off the season just as strong as she, uh, she started it towards the end of that world tournament there. I am a fan of peaches. Uh, I love peach cobbler. I love uh, peach. Uh, oh, what do they call peach preserves? They're, they're really good. But it's not about peaches right now. It's it's about the INCW Women's Championship. It's about Susan Rays. It's about Queen Jolene. All right, we have the carbon fiber belt, just as tough as its champion.
Susan Rays looks ready. Queen Jolene always ready. Got her hair braided up. Referee holding the title belt, showing everyone what is on the line here today. And here we go. Kick to the midsection does Queen Jolene. Oh, follows it up with a slap. Disrespectful. But Susan Rays will take the slap and return it with a cross body block. Big clothesline to the outside. Queen Jolene going to the high rent district here. Looking for an elbow drop. Misses every bit of it, but still landed it. Now these two women are fighting outside. Referee is at a count of two. The storied history between these two. It goes deeper than red versus blue. I just rhymed again. I need to stop. Kick to the midsection. Queen Jolene has, oh, Susan falls out the back door into an inverted DDT. Susan rolls in the ring. Referee at a count of seven. And Susan didn't get far enough away from the ropes. Queen Jolene made her pay for it. Has her up and a back body, or not a back body, a back breaker by Queen Jolene. Queen Jolene for the pin. No, just a one count. It's going to take a little bit longer than that to get ahead in the game. Susan Rays has Jolene in the corner. Jolene fights out with an elbow. Follows it up with another and a kick. Brutal attack. Queen Jolene, just with that clothesline, has Susan Rays tied up and a foot right in the lower back. Slingshotting Susan Rays through the top. One, no, just a one count. Dragging the face of Susan Rays into the mat. Angeline going up top. Taunting Susan Rays. I don't know if that's an intelligent move. And the diving clam slam. Thought she would have followed it up with a pin right there, but no, the diving clam slam was enough for her, apparently. Queen Jolene can clam slam an opponent from any angle. Oh, she has. She has Susan up on the top with the vertical suplex all the way to the outside. Wonderful maneuver. Took a lot out of both women, but it looks like Susan Rays took the brunt of the attack. Now Susan back up in the danger zone and dropped face first right onto them steel steps there. Fighting back and forth. Referee is at a count of four. Queen Jolene might be looking for that count out victory. Goes for the pin here. One, two, no. Susan kicks out at two. The queen is beside herself. Has a hold of the leg. Looking to stretch out those ligaments, make it a little bit more difficult for Susan to pull off any of those moves. And a body splash. Body splash by Queen Jolene. Might be wanting to look for a pin. Nope. Corkscrew leg drop. Now she goes for the pin here. One, two, no. Susan out at two. Goes for the uh, fireman's carry takeover. Huge fan of that move, by the way. Very effective. Minimal uh, movement needed. Uh, you can actually use your your opponent's entire momentum against them to perform a fireman's.
All right, we got a leg drop. We've got leg drops of plenty in this match. And the hip attack by Queen Jolene. One, two, no, just a two count. Queen Jolene doing everything in her power to retain her title. Oh, Susan Reigns with a twist of fate in the middle of the ring. Rolls through. Could have went for the pin right there. Up to the top rope. Will she get all of it? The moon saw that caught the knees. Caught the knees right to the stomach. Queen Jolene was ready for her. Kick to the midsection. And Queen Jolene got caught with a, her, a head scissors takeover. No. Not even a one count. Queen Jolene wasn't having any of it. Jolene with a hurricane runner. Sent oh, the stump puller. Stump puller submission applied. I've never seen anyone tap out to this move, so today might be a first. No. And a cross body block. Queen Jolene holds for the pin. One, two, no. Susan Ray's narrowly got out of that one. Queen Jolene, is she going to be looking for that diving pin again? No. One more time. Going to look for the diving clam slam and got caught and power bombed into the corner. Her head hit that lower turnbuckle. That might cause a lot of problems for the champion here. Kick to the midsection. No. Queen Jolene has the leg. Goes for the pin here. One, two, no. Susan Reyes kicks out at two. Stomp to the back of the head. Queen Jolene with the flip. Goes for after the leg again. Susan Reyes has had enough of that. Stomp to the midsection. Queen Jolene with a molly wop chop. Missed every bit of it. Got the rolling elbow though. What is she looking for here? Got the legs trapped into a Mexican surfboard. Looking for that submission hold here. Susan Reyes rolls out. Susan Reyes rolls out and Queen Jolene might be in some trouble. Put on the middle rope and shot back into the ring. Susan looking for yet another twist of fate here. Has it locked in? No, the DDT instead. She faked this out with the DDT instead. She could get the pin here. Got it locked in. One, two, no. Queen Jolene kicks out at two. Susan letting everybody know. Queen Jolene has Susan Reyes in the corner. Went for a kick to the midsection. Susan Reyes with the reversal. Jolene with the reversal. Big chop. Sends Susan Reyes stumbling out of the corner. And a hip attack yet again. Goes for the pin on this one. One, two, three. Queen Jolene is supposed to be two out of three falls, but we're looking at some nonsense again. The flying clam slam, the high angle diving clam slam. Oh, I feel like we're going to have to see this resolved next season. Holy Wars is a place for everything to go and be resolved. I don't, I feel like we're going to come out of this with more questions than answers this year, folks. Uh, I apologize, but it just, it really feels that way. Queen Jolene retains and is your INCW Women's Champion. The Asylum is not going to be happy about that. I can hear the rumbling in the background, uh, but that's... I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to sip my water and, and not worry about any of that back there because it's not my problem. I'm safe here in my safe space. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up we have our tag team match, which is odd, to say the least. 
you have um, Damian Black. Those of you who have been around for a while, you know who Damian Black is. He's the leader or the owner of PWA. He's also a member of the council for the NWC. Uh, and he is also a wrestler more often than he claims. Uh, then you have Marty Dinkle, the individual in the very bright green. Marty Dinkle is also a member of the NWC Council, um, or National Wrestling Council. Uh, same thing. Uh, and then, I don't know who or what's going on here. I know in PWA, uh, Dinkle and Damian Black have had some workings together uh, because Dinkle has people in a tournament. Um, and then, uh, Damien has people in a tournament that's going on over there. Uh, but Damien Black said that he doesn't deal well with betrayal. And he chose to challenge Shade and Kid Mason for the INCW Tag Team Championships. And he said he wouldn't come alone. Uh, as you see, he didn't come alone. It looks as though he brought the Shockmaster with him. Uh, or some version of the shock master i'm not i'm not really sure on what this is uh, apparently the shock master is the only remaining person on the planet to wear a tap out hoodie uh so yeah this is this is going to be interesting um kid mason and wise man shade uh they have one title defense to their record uh and also they put forth a great effort in winning those tag titles um and i am a fan of that team the alliance is probably one of the best throw together teams to ever walk through incw hmm. shockmaster had to get his time in the limelight someday without falling through a window All right. Dinkle seems very excited about his team. Okay. Um I don't I don't know what to say. I, I <sighs> Wait a minute. That wasn't Shockmaster at all. KB has pulled the wool over our eyes. What is he doing? Doesn't he remember when Damian Black tried to shut down his company? Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. This is not good. Now I have to... I have to find some... Oh, he said he wasn't going to be here. I am not supposed to be here. All right, um, here we have it. KB, if face paint could speak, I believe that his face paint is saying something along the lines of do away with Kid Mason. Um, Shade standing across the ring as well as Kid Mason. You've got to believe Kid Mason had this coming. Come to think of it, I, I can't remember a time KB said everything was good and it was good until he truly felt it was good. So, with KB's car being destroyed, is this what we get? All right, uh, I've been told by Marty Dinkle himself that uh, they are Damian Black and KB are to be called the industry 
This was a bruise all along. Kid Mason, Damian Black. I gotta say, I hope that the Alliance manages to, to keep this together and keep those title belts where they are. We can't have Damian Black coming out of here with the championships. He, he did it one season. We can't have it happen again. Last time, he never came back. All right, and a knee to the lower back. Shade in the ring going after Damian Black himself. Knee to the lower back. Damien and again Damien trying to hold his own against Shade but Shade is just putting in the work Shade keeping Damien over on the other half of the ring keeping it separated Shade setting up a slingshot here and an elbow Drops Black across the knees and then an elbow drop. Kid Mason kind of made eye contact right there with KB. And Black heard the call. KB Chronic is in the ring. Big elbow strike. Sends Kid Mason into the corner and a body splash. Body splash by KB. He may be losing weight, but that's a big dude to be flying at you. Kick puts KB down again. And sent into the corner and another body splash. My goodness. KB is just throwing all of his weight into those punches, into the body splashes. This goes beyond gold, ladies and gentlemen. And now Shade. The two members of Ainu. You have their emotes, and now you get to see them throw down for the second time in INCW history. Shade sent into the corner. Damian Black has a hold of him. KB was choking the life out of Shade. I can't believe it. Why, KB? Why? Elbow. Shade sent back into the corner in a big splash. KB got caught with the arm drag. Shade with the jumping DDT. Doing everything in his power. All right. Shade has control of this match. KB is in the ropes and an arm drag by KB. He knew what was going to happen. He was looking for that stunner. Shade is up. Heathen bomb early to Shade. Early to Shade. No. No, not like this. Not the first fall. One, two, nobody's in to break it up. And Shade magically finds the will of the Hokage to kick out. Shade sent into the corner. Black is lying in wait. He is pissed. Now KB sent into the corner. Shade somehow with the strength of the Hokage. The flipping neck breaker, KB trying to make his way to black. KB with the go behind, oh my goodness. Busting the face of Kid Mason. There he is, has him in the corner, Kid Mason fights his way out. KB, it, for all of the wrong he is currently putting us through, he is one tough SOB. We should have known. It says heathen on his pants. We should have known. The tap out. It was a ruse. Two bearded, painted individuals. KB with a back body drop. Slamming the face of Kid Mason into the ring. And again, KB tagging in Damian Black. Dinkle is excited. Dinkle loves every bit of this. Wants it to keep going forever. Ooh, 
a mini coup de grace by Kid Mason. He's getting fired up. Backed up in the corner. Notice how Kid Mason did not pull the trigger on this knee against KB Chronic. He shouldn't have done it to Damian Black either. Black was looking him face to face, baring his teeth. And Kid Mason with more disrespect. Black caught the arm. Kid Mason one upping the seasoned veteran and Black tags in KB. KB across the ring looks for the big boot and catches a kick to the back of the head. Kid Mason with the athleticism now shades back in. Shade versus KB. Look, wow, what a fall. And a spear. A spear by KB. Now he has the heel hook applied. Looking for the submission lock. Or for the submission victory here. Shade going after the arm. Not going to get hit with an elbow like that ever again. Back body drop by KB. KB looking for that wild swing. Shade blocks it. Shade sends him off the ropes and a drop kick right to the center of his chest. Sends KB buckling to the floor. Kick to the midsection. KB's down. And an axe kick by Shade. Shade with the axe kick goes for the pin here. Where is Damian Black? One, two, no. KB kicks out at two. Damian is back up. Shade now has that key lock applied. KB is doing his damnedest to get out of that hole. All he's got to do is open his arm. It's really quite simple. I'm, I'm looking at it from, from just a, a, an outsider looking in. Just open your arm. It's just the chops, the forearms, the kick to the gut. Someone in the audience has a sign. Says the INU project is tearing apart at the seams. I am here to tell you that that is incorrect. Ooh, but that would prove me wrong. Oh no. KB throwing Damian Black like a lawn dart directly at Shade. Damian Black has the Northern Light Suplex. One, two, no, just a two count. And KB narrowly misses Kid Mason. Referee counting for KB to get out of the ring. Collar and elbow tie up and Damien shoves Shade to the ground. Shade rolls through, nice drop toe hold. Using his speed to stay ahead of Damien Black. Has Black in the corner. Beating his head against that Tom top turnbuckle. Goes for a stomp to the arm. Instead goes for a stomp to the midsection. Black sends Shade into the corner. Sweeps the leg and Shade fights free. Again into the corner. What is Black looking for here? Shade isn't letting him have it. And again, once again in the corner. I don't know how much longer Shade can reverse this. Black has Shade on the top turnbuckle. What is he looking for here? Nothing good can come of this. This is how he won the NW INCW Heavyweight Championship with a superplex. He won it and defended it that very way so many times. Patented superplex by Damian Black. Now... Send Shade into enemy territory. Shade with the reverse. Oh, Shade has busted Black wide open. Shade might be upset with KB, but he's going to take all of the rage out on Black. Damien donning a crimson mask. Dropping his blood in. Oh, with the reversal. Is he looking for it again? Shade's not going to let it happen. Shade stepped through. Has the arm locked in. 
Elbow to the back of the arm. Damian Black. Sends Shade into the corner. KB with a shot to the back of the head. What is Damian looking for here? Oh, what the... What was that? What was that? What did we just see? What did we just see? Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Wars Arena is haunted. I repeat, the Holy Wars Arena is haunted. Oh no. Oh, this is not good. What is going on here? No, no, not like this. Not like this. The industry pop, pop, triple power bomb. No, no. The disrespect is real. Oh my God. Damian Black goes for the pin. KB with the assist. Shade still manages to kick out. Shade still manages to kick out. KB is in the ring. Big chop. Shade looking to do everything he can. Kid Mason is leaving him behind. Damian Black has that rear chin lock applied. How will Shade come out of this one? Shade with the forearm, trying to get the upper hand, leaving KB outside. Neither Shade nor uh, Kid Mason really want to put their hands on KB. They don't want to put their hands on the boss, rightfully so. But Damian Black, the man who has spit poison and vile into not only INCW, but PWA and the NWC as a whole, and now transferring into the I Do Project, Damian Black needs to be removed, and KB needs to see the error of his ways. But it will not happen here today. Shade is going to take another superplex to the center of the ring. He is the sacrificial lamb, and once again with the triple power bomb. How many times will they put this man in this predicament? Oh my God. Shade, Shade needs all the help he can get. Everyone has turned on Shade. Kid Mason is allowing this to happen. Marty Dinkle is stopping the count. Marty Dinkle is stopping the count. Whose side is he on? One, two, three, and the first pinfall goes to the industry. KB has turned on Shade. Patrick has sided with the Blackwells. Shade is by himself. He is all alone in INCW. With the Exploder Suplex, even his current tag team partner is not helping him. Kid Mason stands in the corner. All right, Dinkle got ejected. That, that's very good. Very good, very, very good. KB with that big shot into the contact high. Contact high by KB. That is right where the end of the road starts. Goes for the pin here. One, two, and Kid Mason attacks the ref. He couldn't get to KB, so he got to the ref. KB looked for the chop block. KB sending Shade into the corner. What's he looking for here? Shade fighting with everything in his power. Power bomb. Power bomb by KB. He drops to a knee. He knows he doesn't want to do it. He's fighting with the Damian Black voice inside of his head. And here he goes. Steps through. Has the walls of Jericho applied. Shade is forced to tap. The industry is your new tag team champions. What kind of disrespect is this?
Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, this will go down as the absolute worst Holy Wars in INCW history. I can't believe what we just saw here. All afternoon, the fans have been asking, begging, pleading for KB Chronic to remove me, to eject me from my commentary seat, only to have him come in and pull a stunt of this magnitude, a spit in the face to INCW, a spit in the face to the, I can't believe you, KB Chronic. You're a despicable human being. You, you don't deserve the face paint. You don't deserve the title, and you don't deserve these fans. I can't believe this. This is, this is unheard of. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting, we're getting things ready. We're getting things ready for what could possibly be a better match. What is up, everybody? It's KB Chronic. Man, that was a hell of a match, if I do say so myself. We've got people bleeding all over the place. Come on, you guys wanted me. I'm back. It's all good. Everything's fine here. I'm going to call all the rest of the matches, and there's not a damn thing anybody can do about it. I now have, I, I now have my own title belt. I now have everything. This is what you guys wanted, right? The, 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 the refs want to keep acting like I paid them. Uh, the, like, Shade team. If Shade was going to team with anybody to go after tag titles, why didn't he ask me? I mean, it, it, it only makes sense, right? No, no, that's that's fine. He, he, for a, birth, a Make-A-Wish birthday episode? Come on. Get out of here. Kid Mason, go right back to the back of the line, buddy. Can't believe y'all. Do I agree with everything Damian Black does? Absolutely not. But is he my tag team partner right now? Hey, it's better than some people. Fuck out of here. All right, we're going to get on to some lackluster wrestling. Yes, I said it. Yuri Day, terrible pro uh, protege. Worst idea I ever had. Captain Carolina's Cuisine, get out of here. We all know that's BTS in a mask. Come on. And Info Warrior, we are the Resistance. Who's the Resistance? Look, get, where's your belt? Come on. Get out of here. I'm the only champ here in INCW. The only one. The Blackwells, no, not a champ. Me, champ. Championship material right here. You just watched, you just witnessed every bit of it. People talking about wanting a little bit of the bubbly. Well, how about I use the walls of Jericho? Is that enough bubbly for everybody? It's the last time I get stabbed in the back. Guaranteed. Got me out here dressing like Shockmaster. Come on. Give me a break. Info Warrior donning his black and green again. Guess the, the the red was a little bit too intimidating for him. Or maybe it's because we have so many people wearing red. Can't believe I gotta keep pointing that out. Whoever wins this title, just know your Christmas present from me is me coming for this belt. Period. I'm gonna have all my gold. Every bit of it. Y'all are gonna... Get the fuck out of here. Y'all are going to get a little bit more Chet Lemon come Christmas. Info Warrior taking his sweet time getting down here to the ring. You would think with all the 
the title shots I've given him, he would give us the respect of, I don't know, expediently getting in the ring. So we can get this all said and done. Worst season of INCW ever. Let's close it out with the worst match ever. This ain't even the last match. We, st we still got to watch a piss poor tag team that could never hold the titles to save their life. Hold the titles for a season, for Christ's sake. No, they couldn't do it. So instead, we get to watch them fight each other and then disappear into the Aether, never to be seen from again, joining up with those lame ass bunnies. Look at this guy. Look at this. He. I told him that those tights belong to Fatback. And he still wears them. Not a lick of English does this dude hear. Or maybe he just chooses not to hear me. He's a paper champion, for Christ's sake. Can't even bring his own country's flag to the ring. Oh, my God. So this is going to be a triple threat. I, I think it's like 30 minutes or some nonsense, maybe 15. It's 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 a time limit match. There's two Iron Man rules, so whoever's got the most wins at the end of it wins. If it's a draw, then Yuri gets to hold on to the title still. Yada, yada, yada. I will say, though, like, these tag titles, pristine condition shiny as hell huge fan huge fan of my design oh man all the time all the time that is spent watching these people parade around like they're better than me. Are you kidding me right now? And here we go, new referee. This one should be able to call things clean. If he can't call things clean, well then, it may, it's whatever. 15 minute time limit. Yep, that's exactly how much time this title deserves. Oh, look at that. The Falcon Arrow. Nobody kicks out of it. All right, here we go. And Info Warrior interjecting himself into the fray. Yuri Day with a cool little punch. Everybody does that punch. Everybody, did you notice everybody in that little protege tournament did the exact same moves? Oh, look at the slide and baseball kick, and it kicked Info Warrior in the head. I honestly think that Captain Carolina Cuisine, aka BTS, is the one who needs to come out of here with the belt because I was cheering for him the entire time that he was fighting against Yuri Day. Uh, Yuri Day is a waste of time. Yuri Day is the 30th of February. That's how important it is. All right. Captain Carolina Cuisine gets thrown to the outside. Nice little powerbomb. Yay! Oh, you're so strong for a thin person. Come on, get out of here. Just, just do the... Yada, yada, yada. Go for your finishers. I got half a mind to get up from this commentary table and just, like, knock people out. Got people cheering for Info Warrior. That'll work. Got people cheering for Yuri Day. That'll work. Oh, look at that slap. Oh, what a vicious slap there that it was. Oh, and a clubbing blow to the back of the head. So done with this match already. 
Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no, the shoulder tackle of doom. Hey, look at that. Look at that. That's a Lou Fez press. You know why? Because Lou Fez does it best. Should not be doing it in Fort Warrior. Ever. Ever in life. Don't do that no more. Oh, this just in. The camp won the world tournament. How am I supposed to not do everything I'm doing right now when my own team can't win my world tournament? Like, how, how did you... Just real quick. Take your mind off the action for a hot second. Look like Yuri Day was doing up there in the corner. Uh, how... How in the absolute hell was none of this supposed to happen? Disrespected on so many levels. I put up with so much from this roster. Going for the pin. Looking for that first win here. And Yuri Day don't get it. Before. What? So why is he not exponent like doing it quickly now? One, two, no, no. Drop kick to the back of the head. Oh, look at that. He took time to dance. That was adorable. And into an arm bar. Info Warrior has never won a match by submission. You know who won a match by submission? Me, just now, with the walls of Jericho. Thank you. Oh, he broke the arm. It's not actually broken, folks. It looks vicious, but it's not. You know how I know it's not? Because with the amount of people that do that same move, everyone's arm should be dislocated. Oh, he's going to drop him on the hardest part of the ring. Uh. And there he goes. Yuri Day with the kick to the midsection. Oh, look at the elbow. Throwing out some handy work. Do you know Yuri Day hasn't come to like get tutelage for me not once? Like he was supposed to be my prodigy and I can't find it or protege and I can't find him anywhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, a cutter, a cutter by Carolina Cuisine. One. Two, no. I know you're thinking to yourself, KB, if you know that's BTS, why did you let him back? You said it was all or nothing. Because no one else cares about the rules, why should I? Insanity wasn't supposed to be back. Now he's the NWC ch world champion. Info Warrior got some athleticism going. I will give him that. Info Warrior's got athleticism. Look at this. Look at this. Cheesy little roll-ups. Oh, there it is. Oh, and a spear. Is Info Warrior going to pin someone? Yes. Looking to come out of here with the belt. One, two, three. Oh, he got one pinfall. There's ten minutes left in this match, and he, and we have our first pinfall. So, that, I mean, that's good. That, that means there's going to be a new champion if nobody else gets a pinfall right now. Oh, oh, look it. Big time sexy wiggling his hips. That was... Wow. So much going on there. And Yuri gets dropped on the back of his head. BTS taking time to celebrate instead of, I don't know, going for a pin. I guess everybody wants me to, like, wake up Chet Lemon and bring him back because all the chat died. The chat is no longer around. Oh, we got an attitude adjustment into an attitude adjustment because InfoWarrior is John Cena. Dun, 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 dun. One. No, just the one count. Yuri Day said no. Where's my Chet Lemon chant? Maybe that'll wake him up. 
Chet Lemon, clap, 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 clap. Chet Lemon. Oh no, there it is. Yuri Day goes for the pin. One, two, three. We got it tied up. It's going to be a draw right now, which means Yuri Day is going to come out the champion. Whatever will we do? Yuri has that face lock thing applied where an arm's all tied up. It's odd. Oh, look at Info Warrior pretending he's Rocky Balboa. Info Warrior is the absolute most Captain America individual in INCW. Maybe more so than Navy SEAL. Oh, look at that. Nice little Falcon Arrow right there. Should have went for the pin, because nobody picks out of the Falcon Arrow. Oh. Oh, Yuri. Yuri with the jabs and the fancy footwork thinks he's Muhammad Ali, but he's not. And Big Time Sexy or Captain Carolina Cuisines in the corner. Bulldog got busted open through the mask. That's funny. Goes for the pin. One, two, three. And Yuri Day. Yuri Day is currently going to be the champion at the end of this. Not if Info Warrior continues to be Rocky Balboa. Boop. There it is again. Elbow. Kick to the midsection. Has him up. And down into an arm bar. Okay. Rolls through. Might be a yes lock. No, he's going to try to break his arm again. One. Two. Oh no, so close. So very close. Yuri's back in the ring. Trying to stop Info Warrior. Info Warrior hits both of them. A twisting stunner. And gets broken up. BTS. Or Captain Carolina Cuisine. Info Warrior thrown over the top rope. And Carolina Cuisine. Two. No. Just a two count. Oh, man. This is the longest 15 minutes of my life. Oh, look at that. He's wiggling his hips again. How effective is this? Not very. Stunner 76, yay! Goes for the pin, one, two, three. It's tied up again. It's all tied up again. Oh, wow. Ha, 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 Triple C is making people hit their face. One, two, no, no. That was funny, though. That was some Three Stooges entertainment right there. Oh, look at Yuri Day. Yuri Day with some, I don't know, cruiserweight level maneuvers. Got the pin here. One. No. No, just the one. Kick to the back. Oh, they are duking it out here. I think that's called like the shake, rattle, and roll elbow 2.0. Yuri Day. One. Two. Th oh. One, two, three, and one for good. Goes for the pin here. All in the ropes. Triple threat, don't care. One, two, three. Oh, man. You remember that time I was going to make this a triple threat match? And then I hated it? I remember. 
It's also the same night that I won the tag team championships. Both of them. Oh no. Yuri Day has been dropped on his face. That was pretty impressive. He did some corkscrew rotation and got all the way over there. Oh, look, Yuri's going for another pin. One, two, three. Ah, well, look at that. I think it's like four to two. Info Warrior got some work to do. And he's going to run through everybody. Go for the pin, dude. There you go. One. Two, no. Yep. Definitely coming for this title. Info Warrior with the flashback. He's got 30 seconds to get two wins. He can get both of them right there, or he can pick somebody up. Oh, Yuri looking for five. Time's up, and Yuri Day is still your champion. Christmas is going to be a uh, Christmas is going to be a bad day for you, son. Is Christmas on a Sunday? Because if Christmas is on a Sunday, we're going to have to do the Christmas special not on a Sunday. I might be a bad guy, but I'm not a bad guy. Oh no, Christmas is on a Friday. Cool. So, I know I talk shit about him, but I, I feel like if there's anybody who should hold the tag titles more than me, it's me. Um, but, the Warriors are a close running. It's just, four seasons, man. They've been in here for four seasons. It's, it's time to hang the boots up, bro. You, we didn't get to see much of you. It's a damn shame, but... You gave it a good run. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to watch this last little match with them. And we'll move on with it. All right. The main event. No, it's not. The INCW Tag Team Championship match was the main event. You know why? Because I was in it. Because the industry was in it. Because the NWC was represented on all fronts in it. Did, did you see the, just the courage of Dinkle to get in there and, and, and help us in our time of need? He, he put his career on the line. Dinkle could have been destroyed by anybody, but he didn't care. He got in there and he helped us with that powerbomb, not once, but twice. And then the ref ignorantly threw him to the back. We lost all of our moral support when Dinkle got sent to the back. Every single ounce 
of what we had pushing us forward, aside from my hatred for my own company, every single ounce of what we had pushing us forward from Dinkle went to the back. The fact that we won is a true underdog story of its time. 2020, the year of the industry. I know we only had one match, but that's all you need. That's all you need for that one year. The Warriors could have had it. I wanted the Warriors to have it. But it's just not their time anymore. There was a point in time where I had to retire. It was at the beginning of the season, and I decided I didn't want to. Well, they have to retire, and if they come back, I'll kill them. I'm not going to kill them. You can't, you can't say that. But I'm going to beat the hell out of them. And here we go. I'm actually looking forward to this match. We've seen them wrestle many times before. They even had a little feud where Crusher ended up getting fired. And then he showed up. He was working for PWA. And then he won and got his job back. So, I'm pretty sure that uh, Drax Shadow is probably going to win this match. Got the arm bar in there. Man, I'm sorry. I'm really trying to call this match. I, I, when I say I want to see this match, I mean it. From the bottom of where my heart used to be, I really mean I'm trying to watch this match and call it for you and give you the main event you deserve. But two things. One, this belt is really shiny, and I just can't take my eyes off of it. And two, I told you the main event already happened. So, enjoy the last match of the Warriors. Oh, Nice submission locked in there. You see how far he rolled through? Yeah, see, I knew Drax was going to be able to do that. And look, he could have went for a pin right there, and it could have all been over, and Crusher would have been retired with egg on his face. Crusher sent into the ropes. You know, I kick myself for not putting the Warriors in the, uh, in the World Tournament, and then I remembered I didn't let anybody in the world tournament if they had a title. Oh, went for the knee and missed all of it. That is some of the absolute most Charlie Brown shit I have ever seen in my life. All right. Lift on a stunned opponent. Oh, Crusher has him up, but Shadow falls out the back. Oh no, what do we have here? Oh, a vertebraker! I love that move, love that move. Very slow, per low percentage of people who use that move, but I love it. It's my favorite. Oh, nice dragon leg, or dragon whip. Goes for the pin. One, two, no. I don't have a dragon whip. Nice little maneuver there. Oh, go for the pin here. Oh, oh, Crusher with that arm bar again. And rolls through. Oh, Drax could have had him. Could have had him, but didn't. Well, yeah, 
that, man. You gotta do dragon screws. How else are you gonna keep your opponent from standing up? A chop block? Come on. Nobody's got the weight to do that anymore. Except for me. I did it. I did it a couple times. Oh, look at that. More Charlie Brown nonsense. Oh! Clothesline to the outside. Looks like he broke his coccyx. Coccyx. Oh, wow! Okay, okay. That was, that was impressive. That was impressive. I like that. Drax, Drax was always my favorite. If Drax comes back, as, as long as he's on my team, he's good. If he's not on my team, I'll kill him. Oh, look at Crusher. Wow, that was a lot. Oh my god. Drax. Oh, wow. Oh, there it is. Shadow Zone. Love that move, too. Caught that Shadow Zone. This is the end for Crusher. Good match, guys. One, two, three. It's over. What? Why? Guys, I have things to do. Hell in a Cell comes on. If you're wanting to watch Hell in a Cell, like, you've already seen the main event. Just change the channel. Oh, look at that. Got that bow and arrow stretch. Nobody's ever submitted to that, by the way. Wow, that was impressive. I'm going to have to watch the replay because I looked away for 10 seconds. Oh, it was a nice thrust kick to the face. And there's a knee. Oh, the blocks. Boom. This match. Oh, look at Drax with the ground and pound. Full mount just laying the woodwork down. Oh, that's not what that means. Hitting him with his fist a lot. Oh, got that vertebraker applied. And center of the ring. Did you notice how Crusher's neck almost snapped in half right there? Beautiful. One, two, and three. I told you Drax Shadow was going to win because he is the better warrior. All right. And that brings us to the end of what was probably one of the most grueling, painstaking events of my life. Season 4. So, let, let me let's just go over all the things that led to Holy Wars. One. Uh I got robbed from the world tournament like we didn't just lose the world tournament we finished like dead last or second to last in the world tournament so that right there that was just that was a, a sour taste in my mouth uh and then then like the referees start calling their own things and everybody's like oh my god the referee's on the payroll but who's payroll because i'm the only one with the payroll around here uh so it's like all right well so the referees aren't listening. We'll switch refs. Nope, they keep not listening and not seeing things. All right, cool. Then the wrestlers go into business for themselves. Hmm. Starting to get a little agitated here. Uh, but it, it, it's all right, because that's the wrestling business. That's the business that I love, right? Well, then all other wrestling started to suck. And, and simultaneously, not only did I lose interest in my promotion and anyone in it, I lost interest in the, in, in the industry as a whole. Um... And that, you know what? It happens. People lose touch with their passions every once in a while. Uh, but what doesn't always happen is someone comes along and, and reignites that interest. All it takes is one little one little came along. He reignited my interest because he he was flashy. He painted his face. Everything was cool. And I was like, man, this is this is gonna be awesome. Then he became a champion, and I was like, this is great. Kid Mason is right where he needs to be. Like he's doing everything. If, if I could have made a protege, I would have made him. And it would have been awesome, just like it is. And then he got mad and childish because things didn't go his way. And, and let me point out that I don't really make money doing this. Uh, then he threw somebody, he threw a warrior through my car. Okay, 
Well, I didn't know it was your car. You didn't know it was my car, huh? You didn't know it was my... It's literally the only silver Honda Civic in the place. You know why? Because I'm the only one who drives here. Anyways. Uh, so that happens. And the anger grew. I was going to shut everything down after this season. Holy Wars 3, going to be the last. Holy Wars going to be last INCW. And everybody was going to retire and be gone forever. But then Damian Black came to me. Oh, I skipped a step. Then Shade teamed with him because he wanted to. Or because uh, they wanted to form the alliance and they became tag champions. Oh, that really put salt in the wound there, kid. Not only are you going to destroy my property, you're going to snatch up one of my friends, my teammates, my brother from another mother, and pit us against each other. Because that's what you do when you put him in the ring going for one of my titles with you. If I'm against you and you put him on your team, I'm against both of you. That's what happened. I just didn't know how to do it. Then Damian Black, in all of his terrible wisdom, came to me and said, Hey, I don't like betrayal either, and you've been slighted. We should team up. And I said, sure. Should I have done it? Eh, probably not. Am I happy I did it? The shine from this red metallic piece of heaven around my waist right now says, yes, I should. So, long story short, I stole the show. I stole the show, and I got the two pinfalls. And it was badass. Love it. Every minute of it. What else is there to cover that is not completely me gloating? Because I feel like y'all are tired of hearing me gloating. I'm not. Love gloating. Don't get to do it very often. You usually gotta be the nice guy. Completely underrated. Uh, anyways. So, yeah. December 20th is going to be our next show. It's a long ways away. I know. But... It gives us time to reflect and look at our reflections in our brand new shiny tag titles. Um, and just see where we kind of want to go from here. Uh, maybe we'll rebrand. Maybe we won't rebrand. I don't know. We shall see. Um, some people will return. Some people will not return. If your fan favorite, if the one you cheer for does not return, well, that sucks. For you, not me. Um, all of my fan favorites are going to return. Because I'm my fan favorite. I think that's about it. Yeah. We'll see y'all around Christmas. Uh, until then, I hope you get really fat during Thanksgiving. And yeah. Fuck off. <laughs>